apparently now only we start with the video recording so okay just i um, just want to check can you see the lecture like the powerpoint file can you see it use your audio to reply yes uh, yes doctor so it's a uh, it's full screen right? is it yes okay yes sir yeah, okay, thank you. So I think I will start delivering lecture. So this is electrical conductivity, and uh, I think I don't talk too much because you already submitted your lab report. The previous lab report is about pH, EC, and yeah, pH, EC, and something else I cannot remember. But let's get started. Okay, so electrical conductivity. Now, why is it so important? Now, in this case, electrical conductivity signifies the amount of dissolved, uh, dissolved salts in the soil moisture. Now, why this is so important? Because most of the time, these salts are either nutrient or uh, you know, uh, it could be toxic materials, but usually like, it reflects the amount of nutrient. But it's not always the case because salt can be anything. It could be sodium chloride, it could be potassium chloride, potassium nitrate, it could be anything. But one thing for sure is our salt cannot be having too high electrical conductivity. Because as you all may have known, uh, too much of fertilizer may kill the plants, and which is true. Now, you probably don't know how too much salt can kill the plants, but here I have two videos that you probably can watch later. I will show you now. Now, usually uh, in the lecture hall, I will click this YouTube video and can watch it. But because of the time constraint, then I think you can watch it later. Now, the first video is showing you how salt can appear in soil. Now, this salt is sodium chloride. It's not nutrient. It's sodium chloride. You must be wondering how this salt can appear in the soil. Well, you don't have to find too far away because our ocean, the sea, the sea actually is like have salt water. So they, they can actually come from the sea. Now, how exactly this happened? This YouTube video will show you that this salt actually you usually will appear in the continental region, a region where you have very vast area of land like Australia, like uh, Sahara Desert or maybe even the United States of America. You can actually watch this video and actually this video is more of a how to explain to you how this salt appear in the soil. Now the next video actually is more useful for your examination because why this video will show you how excessive salt may affect, adversely impact the growth of plants. Now, I think last time we had learned about soil moisture, right? So it has a little bit of a connection between that because we need water. I mean, plants need water to have like photosynthesis. Water is part of the components in photosynthesis and also they need to extract nutrients from the liquid. Now, too much of salt will affect that. By watching this video, you have a better idea. So without further ado, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Now, too much of salt, what will happen? Number one, direct toxicity. Now, in this case, they say boron, but I would say the toxicity would be more of sodium. Now, earlier I told you that sodium probably is a toxic element for plants. Well, in essence, sodium is an essential element. So it's not completely correct to say that sodium is toxic. However, when we say trace element, that means the plants need it just a little bit. You see, if if salt, if 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 the soil too much salt, what we're going to happen is that it becomes toxic to the plants. So in this case, you probably can add one more. Apart from boron in the slide, you also can add sodium. Sodium, too much of it, is also can cause toxicity. Okay, point number two, disrupting the ionic balance in the plant. Now, in this case, how does it happen? Now, I believe sodium is not the only nutrient. Because if you look back at the uh, macronutrient, we have potassium, we have nitrogen, and we have phosphorus. You see, these are the three major elements needed by plants. 
Don't forget, there are others like calcium, magnesium. It could be iron. Now, these are trace elements that the plants need a little, but they cannot live without it. Now, here's what happened. If a soil has too much of sodium, what will going to be absorbed in preference will be the sodium because they have a lot. So what happened to uh, other, other nutrients like uh, calcium, uh, magnesium? It will go to affect its absorption. So not much of calcium and magnesium that can be absorbed because when the soil have too much of sodium, the plants only absorb it, majority of them. So that, that, that is said to be disrupting the ionic balance and also the absorption. And then number three, interfering nutrient uptake. So this is one example of blossom and rot of tomatoes due to high salt interference with calcium uptake. So this is what I said earlier. If there is a disruption of ionic balance, in the end, the plants will only know how to absorb sodium and they cannot absorb calcium because, because too much of sodium in the soil. And then number four, now this one related to the soil moisture that we learned earlier. Now, when you have a salty solution, it is said to be, uh, it, it will going to attract a lot of moisture because why? Sodium actually is a positive charge and they can actually attract a lot of water, which is H2O. Now, you can actually watch this video and you will learn how exactly sodium will going to draw water away from the plant towards itself. So what happened? The plants will dry up, isn't it? Now, this is exactly how you make your ikan kering and also your sayur kering, isn't it? How do you preserve your, your vegetables and how do you preserve your fish? You put a lot of salt and what happened? The fish and the vegetables, their water inside the vegetables will be absorbed by the salt. Uh, this is how it happened, number four. Okay. So moving on to the next one. Now, I have exactly the same EC meter in my lab, this one. Guess what? It costs 40 ringgit. I think maybe now it got up because uh, Malaysian currency lately drops by 10 cents. So I think probably now this one costs 42 or 40, 44 ringgit. Now, unless you have fish or aquarium in your house, you probably won't going to need this one. But I need this one because I am a soil scientist and this is, this works wonderful. Now, for 40 ringgit of EC meter, it works wonder and it's still working. I bought it like last year and it's still working. Of course, the major function is to measure electrical conductivity. Now, actually, electrical conductivity, EC, is analogical to TDS. TDS means total dissolved solid because why they are measuring the like the the potential between there there are two electrodes actually and they're measuring the potential between them more dissolved solid will going to transfer more electricity and that indicates more total dissolved solid and that at the same time gives higher electrical conductivity now the one that you use in the lab is more or less the same in fact i would say it's exactly the same the only difference is that one is more accurate more sensitive and more reliable that one is the desktop instrument this one is uh portable ones okay now function ec value is estimated by passing and determining a small current through soil slurry now exactly what you did earlier now when you did your ec measurement of your soil you have mixed one part of soil with 10 parts of water and then after that you put this in there you go you are measuring the electrical conductivity from the soil slurry now this electrical conductivity cannot be measured by dry soil you cannot because it needs some um, liquid to carry the dissolved item so that it can pass the voltage. Now this one, I won't going to go into too detail of it, but I think I'm going to stress on one thing. Usually, electrical conductivity is measured by unit steamen over distance. Now this distance, not so sure how it got into it, but this is usually the unit. 
it's either measured by milli semen or micro semen. The one that you are using in the lab, actually, if not mistaken, is in micro semen. Per, if not mis mistaken, Peter. But this one, it could be a little bit different. So it all depends. It depends on the what whatever the instrument that you use, and then you just need to make conversion accordingly. Now on, on another unit, it could be merely a uh, mega ohm per centimeter, and then the conversion is as usual. However, if you're going to see this one in examination, it's going to be a unit semen per meters or centimeter or whatever. So these are the normal unit. Now that's not our concern because our concern is uh, well. Let, you, let me take you through. So this is the, the table. The table, not, not, not that we are concerned of this table because this is anyway the conversion, okay? The conversion from EC to TDS. So let's say if you have EC value, uh, milli semen per centimeter, you probably have an estimate around 700 ppm of dissolved solid inside. Not sure what is it, but it's around this amount. Now, the measurement actually is subjected to a lot of error, something that you actually did not write in your lab report, actually. So this lecture slide actually show you these are the source of error. How does it? Because EC actually is dependent on temperature. For every temperature fluctuation up and down of temperature, it will going to give some variation in EC value. Not much, 1.9%, but it's quite significant actually. More so if it's fluctuate to 5%. 5% is more than the acceptable level. Now, this is a conversion factor. Let's say if you have a change of temperature from 25, I believe this is a temperature where you first enter the lab. Usually when the temperature of the aircon is cold, nobody's inside, that is a temperature. But when you have 40 of your friends in the lab, that temperature might rise to 30. It's not surprising. It may happen, yeah. So these are the conversion. Uh, yeah, I know it's a little bit too late, guys, because you already submitted your lab report. Okay, now, now this is important interpretation. Now the EC value here, we are going to use it to interpret. Let's say if you have such and such EC value, what does it mean? Okay. Now this is exactly the same with uh, the lab manual. The lab manual that you saw in uh, the table in your lab manual, in which the electrical conductivity is tabled here as deci semen over unit meter. See, changes again the unit. But this is a table that you will need to use when you want to interpret the EC value. So if you first measure using your EC meter in the lab, you have to convert. If you don't convert, you're wrong. Because as far as I know, the EC meter in the lab is not exactly the same like this. You have to convert. Okay, let's say you manage to convert. And after you convert, you get, let's say, zero, between zero to one. This soil is said to be very good. Not, not the same. Thing. I mean, at least much better than those higher guys. So if it's between zero and one, this soil is said to be suitable for agriculture. It's considered non-saline. So let's say, for example, if you manage to like uh, measure this and convert it correctly and you want to interpret, first thing first, you say is, okay, the EC value is 0 0.05 and therefore the soil sample is non-saline and is suitable for agriculture. Yeah, it could be as easy as that. I think most of you managed to do it. I, uh, I'm not sure because the, the 20 articles, uh, the, no, sorry, the 20 lab reports that I managed to correct two weeks ago, majority of them managed to correctly convert it into the right unit, which is, yeah, well done. The rest of it, I hope you also do the same. So the rest of it, now let's say if it's more than that, then it all depends. If the EC value is more than one deci semen per meter, what does that mean? It's not the end of the world. Frankly speaking, if it's more than one deci semen per meter, it's not the end of the world because in USA, quite sure that almost all of the desert soil is more than that. 
So some of the some of the soils that have high EC value can still be used for agriculture, but the plants, not many plants can actually endure this high EC value. So I'm going to bring you quickly to this table over here. Table number five. So what kind of uh, vegetables or crops that can be grown on saline soil? As you can see, here, there are many actually. Uh, well, I think this table is actually more applicable to continental regions with agriculture like Australia because their soil actually is very saline. Reason number one, because it's Australia. Now, if you still remember, Australia is mostly desert. They actually don't have enough rain. But coming back to Malaysia, Malaysia is actually the world's second highest rainfall region in the world. So when you talk about saline soil, this is virtually a non-issue in Malaysia, I would have to say. Yeah. So Malaysia is blessed because we don't have too much of this problem. And majority of soil actually can be planted with all kinds of crops, as you can see right now. Of course, of course, minus strawberries, because some of these crops actually they are temperate crops. They're not tropical. So Malaysia is tropical, not all of them can be planted. And with that, that is the end of our lecture. So I am going to come over and uh, see if you have any questions. So, by the way, that is the end of lecture. Um, well, there's no question. Are you sure? Uh, first of all, let me stop sharing first. Okay, so now we are back to the main screen and the last question here is ramai tak boleh nak join for what reason yeah anybody yeah yeah you can you can switch on your mic you can switch on your mic and let's have some conversation did they say anything me too simon yeah this oh oh so that means your line is down here. No one approved my request to join the class. Okay, okay. Uh, there's no request. Oh, I am the only one who can accept that. Ah, uh, see, see. I mean, that is a that is a problem. That you see, whenever I started class, then I cannot accept them already. So, the classroom is already closed. But the good news is you can have the video and you can watch it later. So for next round, we're going to take a, I'm going to stop this recording. Oh, oh, by the way, before that, do you have any question regarding the lecture just now? Any question? I'm still waiting. No question. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So with that, I'm going to end this first session. And uh, this will be made in YouTube video. So whoever who cannot join this meeting, you can actually join later and then you can watch the video later later on to catch up. Yeah. So I will stop the recording right now. Yeah.